This guy has been inspected and approved by Luminous. Hey guys, this is Sunsfan, and welcome to the official Dota Cinema Guide to Broodmother. If you aren't familiar with this hero, you may want to watch the introduction we did for her at the corresponding link. Broodmother is an agility hero who has potential to carry but is most relied on to push. The reason she's so effective at doing this is she's able to stay in lane for so long because of her innate ability to survive. Skill build. Skilling Brood can be somewhat dependent on who you're going up against. Getting web at 1 is a must though in order to have some lane presence in the very beginning stages. Spiderlings is the second skill to upgrade that will become your bread and butter for not only harassing enemies, but also creating an army of spiderlings to push with. Professional players usually skip their ultimate until level 9, just because it can be so tough to get a kill against heroes she typically goes up against, especially since you won't be getting your passive, Incapacitating Bite, until a bit later. Your only excuse for getting your ultimate so early is if you're having a lot of trouble staying alive. Usually your webs provide more than enough regeneration, but anomalies like this do occur. But going back to the regular build, by level 8, max both your web and spiderlings. Then you can start leveling normally. By normally, I mean getting insatiable hunger at 9, 11, and 16, while being sure to skill your passive every other opportunity. Item build. Starting items for Broodmother can vary, but get your typical regeneration in combination with some branches. Getting the recipe for Soul Ring is also somewhat common since every other component will be at the side shop, which you'll most likely be camping by for the majority of the laning stages. And although more of a pub build, if you plan to get a Vlad somewhere down the road, go ahead and get your Ring of Protection now. In the early stages, like I stated, getting your Soul Ring will be crucial. Using this will allow you to absolutely spam your webs and spiderlings, as there's almost no drawback to using it since you'll be regaining your life so quickly in your web. If you're going the Vlad's build, then do finish your Ring of Basilius at first opportunity as well. Boots for Broodmother are actually pretty simple, being power treads. They provide good stats for her as well as some attack speed which will benefit her throughout the game. Normally I would say a pushing hero could really benefit from Boots of Travel if farming well, but because it takes Brood so much time to set up a nice array of webs, going from one lane to another isn't exactly her strong suit. Into the mid game, BKB needs to be your first priority. It provides good stats and will allow you to actually right click people. In pubs you can go Vlad's if you wish, but typically it's frowned upon and almost never gotten on the professional scene because she really doesn't need lifesteal at all. It's generally considered a waste of gold as it only delays other core items. An item that pros do get almost every game though is an Orchid of Malevolence. This will provide enough mana regeneration for you to spam all your spells to your heart's content. And also having this item will force a second person to help defend against you, since this item in conjunction with your ultimate will net you an easy 1 vs 1 kill. Manta style is also a good item to get, or at least a Yasha, because the move speed given will be very helpful to a hero who relies so much on right clicks. For example, at this stage of the game, opponents will usually have at least one 4 staff, which will make your kills so much harder to come by. Into late game, a butterfly or MKB would be great choices. Butterfly not only gives great stats for any agility hero, but will also provide good survivability against other carries. The MKB is if you just need to hit really freaking hard. The mini stun could also come into play for heroes that try to TP away from you as well. And lastly, although it's situational, a blink dagger should never be taken off the table as it'll provide you the ability to chase after heroes as well as initiate from time to time. Gameplay. Broodmother is usually used as a solo side lane hero. At the beginning of the game, make sure to leave your base and place two webs in your lane as soon as possible. This allows you to regen some mana in time for the creep wave's arrival. In the lane itself, just remember how much regeneration you're getting from your webs, and don't be afraid to harass if needed. At the same token, you can run out of mana extremely fast, so you may need to be passive until you have your soul ring purchased. Once you're comfortable spamming a bit, start last hitting creeps with your spiderlings in order to push the lane. If you're going up against a hero that can destroy your spiderlings early, don't just let them farm the spiders. Instead, just move them to the jungle and have them farm for you. In other words, if you can't push, just farm two lanes at once. No big deal. On the other hand though, if the opposing lane lacks any kind of AoE, then just push away. And don't be afraid to use the actual nuke of spiderlings against opposing heroes, because it actually does deal a nice chunk of damage. If you create a few spiderlings here and there, try microing them a bit to harass the enemy in spurts. Just attack the enemy with your fellow spiders in order to push them off the lane so you can farm in peace. And once you get an orchid, start spamming your spiderlings every single time it's off cooldown because you're going to have more mana regeneration than you know to do with. 
As far as your webs, just place them all over the area that you're camping, because let's not kid ourselves. You aren't going to leave that lane for about 30 minutes anyway. The enemy team is going to try and gank you repeatedly, so get in the habit of checking their inventory for dust or sentries. But generally speaking, when you pick Broodmother, the name of the game is going to be Split Pushing. If you can force a couple heroes into your lane, then your teammates need to push the other side of the map. If there's only one hero in your lane, then just rape them and push. Once more defenders come, just fall back into the jungle and farm. Whatever lane you're inhabiting should be riddled with webs at this point, so finding you isn't always the easiest task for the enemy. Speaking of the webs, just remember that they do give some vision, so try using that to your advantage. If you get caught in a team fight, feel comfortable knowing that you have your BKB done and that you have a built-in satanic. Pop them both and you're unkillable for a decent amount of time. Plus, you should be dealing a ridiculous amount of damage as well. Casting web over the actual scene of the fight is also a great idea for the extra regen and move speed, and not to mention it also gives you the ability to dodge some attacks or spells when going invisible. Counters. Let's see, what counters a hero that goes invisible? In the item department we have dust, sentries, a gem, and level 3 necronomicon. In the hero department there are a few that have that capability as well, two of which are bounty hunter and slardar. But aside from what you should already know, the biggest counter to Broodmother would be those that are able to stop her from pushing in a quick manner. In other words, AoE skills that destroy her beloved Spiderlings. A couple examples of this would be Tidehunter's Anchor Smash and Shadow Shaman's Ether Shock. Two heroes that do deserve a special mention against Broodmother would be Earthshaker, who's a big fan of mass minions, and Sand King, whose multitude of spells will absolutely crap all over Broodmother. So unless you're into that kind of thing, try and stay away from them. Finally, believe it or not, Mjolnir becomes more viable when playing against Broodmother as it will provide your range carry the ability to push her back. Thanks for watching guys and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. Also a special shout out goes to Flawless and Luminous for their help in writing this guide. You can check them out at their respective YouTube channels which are linked in the video description. And finally, be sure to check out our new website at DotaCinema.com where you can find a ton of Dota 2 videos along with our live streaming page, which includes me playing with you guys on a nightly basis. My name is SunsFan, and until next time.